welcome to another episode. So in this week's Real Talk video, I am discussing with you the very important subject of language and answering the question, can you really live in Italy and not speak Italian? Now, of course, I've been living here in Italy for three years and my Italian is mm, very much still at a beginner level, but this video is a conversation that I wish somebody had had with me three years ago before I even boarded the plane to come to Italy and open my eyes to the importance and the impact that language can have on your life because I completely took language for granted. Never ever having been in a situation where I couldn't understand anything, I simply thought I could get by living in Italy and not speaking Italian. And yes, there have been many points where I have been able to do just that, but there has also been a huge part of my experience here that has been tainted because I haven't been able to communicate. And so in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some real talk and I'm going to be opening your eyes as to how not speaking the language has impacted every part of my life from relationships to day-to-day -day living and even to bureaucracy matters. And I also want to share with you as well some tips to help you to overcome any feelings of comparison or self-doubt that you might have when it comes to language learning. So if this sounds of interest, then let's carry on watching. So before we get into the video, time for a very, very quick disclaimer. I live in the south of Italy. Where I live in the south of Italy, English is not widely spoken. Of course, in other regions and parts of Italy, this can vary, but these are my personal experiences, having spent three years in Salerno, and this is what this video is about. So, but rem please remember, there are exceptions to every rule, and I think we can now get into the video. So the first area that I want to talk about is how not speaking Italian has really impacted my relationships. And I'm not just talking about romantic connections, but also friendships, because when you cannot speak the language, you instantly isolate yourself. And this has been one of the most difficult areas I think that I've found in my whole experience of living here in Italy, because I'm a very social person. I love to have a chit chat. Um, I like to be, you know, bubbly, have a laugh, display my personality. And when I came here, I came straight away into a circle of friends whose English level was not that great. And immediately my personality vanished. I sat in group situations, not understanding anything, not being able to communicate, laughing because everybody else was laughing, but not having a clue what I was laughing at. And it was something that I can only describe as surreal. Now, of course, my friends were not unkind. They did their best to translate for me. But as I've mentioned in so many other videos, there is a little problem with translation because especially when it's in an active real-time situation, the magic of the moment is lost by the time the translation is complete. You know, like you're not in that moment, in that magical moment of conversation when everybody's alive and they're talking and exchanging. When you are told what was said two minutes ago, <laughs> everybody's moved on from that. Everybody's now talking about something new. So for this, I found it very, very tough. And I think I started to become very introverted because I realized that I just couldn't express myself. And, you know, I think this was the beginning of like my little breakdown that I had at the end of 2019, if I'm really honest, because I started to realize that it wasn't going to be easy for me to make new connections. And I would always be a little bit of an outsider. So, you know, when it came to friendships, it was tough. And, you know, I was fortunate, I guess, because my friends stemmed from when I first came here and I started the language exchange with um, a wonderful woman and I met some of her friends. That's how my friendship circle was built. But in terms of me making new connections, it was virtually impossible at that point because I just couldn't communicate. And I relied a lot on the friendships that I did have and also on my boyfriend because at that time, he and I, we were able to communicate with Google Translate at the very beginning and then gradually we managed to speak very basic English and you know today we are still together <laughs> even though we had a little separation period we are still together now and you know we found our own way of communicating with each other but that separation in part came about because I began to heavily depend on him for everything because 
I just couldn't speak and I felt like I lost all my independence and I started to feel very anxious because I just wasn't able to do the things that I could so easily do living back in the UK. And I think it's really, really important that we talk about this because it can be so easy to think, I'll be okay, I can get by, you know, I want to live in Italy, let's go. That was my mindset. And don't get me wrong, I've made a success of myself here and I'm amazed at how much I have been able to achieve considering my Italian is at a beginner's level, but it hasn't been easy. And I really, really want to stress this because I'm not sitting here saying, yes, come over, you'll learn Italian within a month of living here. It's not true. Like you pick things up, of course you do. And I agree with immersion to a certain extent because when you are surrounded by Italian all the time, everywhere you go, you are going to start to hear the same words and phrases and expressions and subconsciously you start to learn them and remember them and pick them up and imitate them. And that is how you learn, but it's not an immediate process. And it's taken me like three years to reach the point where I've actually built up a bank of vocabulary and I can basically communicate with other people. So I really want to stress that, you know, if you are a very bubbly, friendly person in the country that you're in, understand you are going to need a degree of Italian to be able to continue that part of your character here in Italy because it's not easy if you can't communicate. It affects friendships and it affects relationships. And a lot of the arguments that I've had with my boyfriend in the past have been because of communication problems. He'll say one thing, I don't quite understand it, we argue, and then we realize that actually we were saying the same thing all along. And you know, it's just unnecessary stress. And I think I really wish that I had had the foresight to know that this was how it would be not being able to speak Italian. So let's talk about like day-to-day -day living then because of course day-to-day -day living is impacted when you can't speak the language. And it goes from the simple activities like going to the supermarket for example, looking at ingredients on tins of food or on food labels and you know being able to navigate your way around the supermarket and understand the types of food that you're purchasing and then coming to the checkout and being able to understand the bill of, and how much you have to pay and if they have a question and you don't understand what they're saying and when it comes to the point where you need to ask for carrier bags there are so many different aspects to food shopping alone at the supermarket that can seem very overwhelming and very intimidating when you can't speak the language. And let's face it, going to the supermarket is one of the simplest actions that anyone can take. <laughs> but it becomes so complicated when you can't communicate. And, you know, moving away from supermarkets, like when you're going to a restaurant or to a bar, or if you want to book a haircut, for example. In the UK, I'll just pick up the phone and telephone the hairdressers and book an appointment. Here, I have to physically go in person to the hairdressers because, to speak on the phone in Italian literally gives me a panic attack. So for this reason, it impacts your day-to-day -day living in a huge way. Now, of course, in the south of Italy, especially where I am, the Italians are so incredibly friendly. They want to help me. They are so impressed when they hear me trying <laughs> to speak in Italian. And some of them will even attempt to speak in English because one thing you need to remember is that English isn't very well taught in state schools here in Italy. And for this reason, a lot of students will take private English lessons if they want to progress in this subject area. Um, and so older Italians especially, they had a very limited English education at school. And so, you know, their English is elementary level at best. And so for this, you have to bear that in mind. They will do their best to communicate because it's maybe their first opportunity they've had in ages to do so, but it's not gonna be the sort of English that you can hold a, a very deep and meaningful conversation with. So for this reason, you know, where it ties back in with what I was just talking about, like your connections and, and relationships with people are never going to be at that level until you can speak in the same language. And you know, like, from other day-to-day -day experiences, I'm talking about like television. In the evenings, you want to just turn on the television and relax, everything is in Italian. And even like programs from America, they're all dubbed over into Italian. So the only way you can watch something in English would be if you watched Netflix or something on YouTube. Like it's not possible for you to watch a program in English on the Italian TV network. So for this reason, even like those activities that you wouldn't even think twice about, 
suddenly you are excluded from because you cannot understand what is happening. And it's the same with the radio, all of these basic aspects of our life are affected and impacted by language. And you know, it's also if you want to just, I don't know, order food, for example, like I started to use Deliveroo for the first time this weekend, just gone, because I was so anxious about ordering food to my home because I didn't speak Italian. And I was like, what am I gonna say when, when they ring the doorbell? And how am I gonna order and how am I gonna pay? Like all of this anxiety meant that for three years, I have never ordered food to my house. And obviously if I've been with my boyfriend or with friends, we've ordered in that way, but for myself solely, no. And this was the first time that I did it at the weekend using the app and it was simple and it was easy, but I didn't think it would be that way for such a long time. So. You really need to open your eyes and understand that language impacts so much of our lives. And, you know, I've spoken about this a lot in one of my other videos, I'll link it above, where I spoke about some of the mistakes that I made before moving here and not paying enough attention to learn an Italian and not really recognizing how important learning a language would be to my experience is definitely one of the big mistakes that I made before moving here. So this is why I am sharing with you just how my life is in these areas, not being able to speak Italian. Moving away from like day-to-day -day living, what about bureaucracy? So you can imagine if I struggle in the supermarket, bureaucracy is like a next level headache. But I will say one thing, I've managed to get by with a lot of help from friends, from my boyfriend, from people who've translated for me, from people that have displayed a huge degree of patience from the odd person that has worked in these government offices that speaks English, but it hasn't been easy. And you know, I discovered a fantastic app called Yandex, I believe it is, and it can translate text real time from Italian to English. So you literally point the camera at the text and it automatically translates it. So when I've had to fill in like documents or forms, this has been an absolute lifesaver. But of course, not being able to fully understand all the terms and conditions if you're opening up a bank account, for example, or you need to open up, I don't know, something to do with your phone, like a, a prepaid SIM. Even then there are terms and conditions that you need to be aware of. All of these things, it's very, very, very tricky when you can't understand Italian. So I want to just open your eyes a little bit to how it really is, because in, like the offices that you have to go to for your bureaucracy because as you know Italy is a very traditional country I've spoken about this a lot in many of my other videos and for the majority of your admin you need to go in person to all of the different offices and it's rare depending on where you are in Italy I've already done the disclaimer um, it's rare for there to be somebody in those offices that speaks English or has the patience or time to want to speak to you in English. So for this reason, it can feel very intimidating and overwhelming when you have to sort out your bureaucracy. So for this, if you don't have a really lovely friend or family member or partner who can come with you and translate, it can feel very, very overwhelming. And I think now, like three years in, I've got the confidence to go into these offices and sort my stuff out and use an app and just get by. But in those early days, oh my goodness, I needed to have somebody holding my hand to take me into these places and show me what to do. So, you know, I want to be real and tell you exactly how it is. I want and to just talk as well, generally, about language learning because I think some of the mistakes that I made when I first moved here especially is that I compared myself to other people. I saw other people that had been living here from other countries, I read comments in Facebook groups, I saw people posting on social media and I realised that people had learnt languages in a much quicker time than I had and I was thinking what's the matter with me and I started to use those successes against myself and so this is where I want you to just take a moment and be like stop. Everybody is unique. What works for one person may not necessarily work for you. One person's free time is very different to another person's free time. One person's commitments in life, again, are very different to another person's commitments. And when you really take that on board and embrace that, I think you become less hard on yourself 
because that was the biggest thing for me. I realized that, hold on a second, the minute I stepped off the plane here in Italy, I started working. And you know, I would spend all of my days working and at weekends, I just didn't want to do anything. So for this reason, it wasn't that I was just sitting at the beach and unwilling to learn. It was just the fact that actually, I was working, I was busy setting up my life here. And to be honest with you, I didn't make the time to learn because I was so preoccupied with everything else that I was dealing with. And so, you know, you cannot compare your journey to anybody else's. And please as well, don't feel pressure from language schools, from like, online courses, where they will sell you this idea that you can learn a language in 30 days or 60 days or 90 days or however many days. But basically, ultimately, in a very short period of time, because let me tell you something, language learning is a process. It is a marathon, not a race. You need to understand that piano, piano, the beautiful Italian expression, slowly, slowly, slowly but surely, you will start to gradually learn the language. It doesn't happen overnight. There isn't a magical cure. There's not a one-stop course that will tell you everything and will be the immediate answer to your language learning. It is a process. And you know, it's very difficult, I believe, for any language school to guarantee success within a set period of time because everybody's learning style and everybody is so unique. And so bear that in mind. Mix up your learning. For me, I'm a very visual learner. So I learn well through pictures, through games, through images, through videos, flashcards. This is how I learn. I'm not one to look at a textbook and be engaged by it and learn that way. We all have our own unique learning method. And so for this, you need to find what works for you, whether it's listening to podcasts, whether it's watching series on Netflix with subtitles, whether it is buying some flashcards or watching a YouTube video or reading some articles on the internet. Whatever it may be, whatever works for you, you need to identify that and double down on it and make that be the base of your journey when it comes to learning Italian. But please don't feel like you have to buy the latest course that promises you results within a certain amount of time because there is no way that a course can do this when everybody is so unique. So I just want you to remember this um, and not to get caught up in those marketing ploys. And I would also say as well, it is entirely possible to live in Italy and not speak Italian. It's not easy. And this was the whole purpose behind this video because I wanted to give you a real talk look into how my life has been for three years. But I'm amazed at how much I've been able to achieve considering my Italian level is so low. And you know, it just shows with mental perseverance and strength of mind, you can really and absolutely achieve anything. But I think learning the language can definitely make your life so much easier and help you to enjoy the process more because really I'm only starting to enjoy fully the process now because I'm able to express myself more, more so than any other year that I've lived here. So, you know, why wait three years to feel that way? Why not be able to feel that from the minute you arrive because you have a basic understanding of Italian and you're not immediately isolated? Just this. I will see you in the next video.